I'm the E-Man, I saw flow man, come make with reason with intelligence. Hunger vlogger, who can't play this? Whoa, 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 so flow. So flow, me shock your ass. Set that beat, father. Set that beat, yeah. Hey, so flow, you can turn up flow, that out of what? So flow turn up the team. Are we say productivity and progress or not? Up, up, right, up. So flow TV again, everybody. It's your host with the most. All right, welcome to So Flow TV again, everybody. It's your host with the most. So this one right here, this made me laugh. Some of the videos that I'm doing, I'm doing the videos without showing my face, but this one I have to show my face because I want to see me expression on them. Because this is something that we have been talking about, right? Senior superintendent collapses in court after guilty verdict. Hmm. All right, so I'm not laughing at the demise of another man, but some people put themselves in a certain situation and then things happen, right? All right, so senior superintendent of police, a senior superintendent of police, you know, Anthony Castile, who was facing charges stemming from a January 2016 incident in which a pregnant woman was shot and injured collapsed in court, collapsed, you know, in the St. James Parish Court when a guilty verdict was handed down against him on Friday. All me I say is, how come them never find the boy who um, killed the pregnant woman down a St. Thomas a couple of years back guilty as well? He ran for the whole church brother scheme and all that, and it actually worked. So, yeah, I'm, I don't feel no way about this. Did the, did the pregnant woman have a gun? Was she coming at you with a knife and she was about to kill you? Anyway, Superintendent Castile had been charged with unlawful wounding and misconduct in a public office by the Independent Commission of Investigation, Indicom. I have my theories about Indicom now, after the Chucky Brown, whole Chucky Brown situation. For some reason, it, it, it behooves me, and I cannot figure out how Chuck Brown gave all that information to Indicom and they sat there and they lapped it all up and yet the only person that end up being found guilty and going to prison is Chucky Brown. Where are the other people that were involved in that? All the name them were called, all the big high powered names that were called. What happened to them? How come they're not under investigation? I've heard that Indicom has said that they didn't have enough to go off of um, for those people. And look, one, bag of, one bag of foolishness. One bag of foolishness. Chucky knew he was fried though when he said to them, do some wiretapping and some something and get the conversation from the telephone company and all these things. And they told him that they don't have access to all that or it's going to be hard for them. Them, them claim, them find access to Vibes Cartel thing though, and it is the, the voice note. Anyway, the senior law and district constable Rohan McIntosh were charged after Janice Hines was shot and seriously wounded while traveling in the back seat of a taxi in Mount Salem, Montego Bay. The driver of the cab reportedly engaged the lawman in a high speed chase through a section of the city on January 22nd, 2016, with the shooting bringing an end to the chase. So they were on a high speed chase. Him say, the taxi man, take off on him. Him say, him run down the taxi. Yeah? Him say, him just fire in at the taxi. Bow, bow, bow! That's wild. That's wild. A successful no-case submission was earlier made on behalf of McIntosh and the case against him was dropped on November 9th. Hear this. Upon the verdict being handed down against him, Castile collapsed while still seated in the dock. So, the taxi man, they had no case against him. In other words then, the taxi man never do a thing. Superintendent take it up on himself. I think some of these police officers, you know, and like I've said before, listen, there are good police officers out there and there are bad ones, right? And I'm not talking to the good ones. So if, you, if you're offended by this and you're a police officer, then you're probably one of the bad ones. But I think some of these police officers go out there with this God complex on their mind. 
And some of them go out there trigger finger itchy happy. Like, I have power. Nothing on go on, man. I want something go on today. See, I care that. Big chase. Like, how, how else could all this have happened? Anyway, Castile collapsed while seated in the dock. He was subsequently rushed to the hospital. His condition so far is unknown. I'm trying a ninja man, but it never worked. Castile is scheduled for sentencing on December 14th in the St. James Parish Court. I guess he'll be collapsing again. Representatives of Indicom were present in court on Friday. Alright, so here I know. The funniest thing is this. I want them to keep this. Yeah man, them, they got one. They got one. So, Chuck Brown was the first to ever be tried and convicted. And right behind that now, you have this superintendent who is now also tried and will be convicted. Let's see if they actually let the punishment fit the crime. Let's see if they actually value life. Let's see if they're actually going to hold him accountable and responsible. A person placed in a position of authority of that high level of authority misused your powers, almost killed people, and let's see how them deal with him. Right? Because they have a funny way of actually, yeah man, I'm guilty, but we'll just let him go upon probation or time served, go sit on your yard, that kind of stuff. Him collapse because I can imagine all the years he has put into this career and what it has come to now. And to see that he's going to finally face the music. Let me close this video by saying this though. I want them to keep the same kind of energy. Yeah? When them are deal with corrupted politicians. That is what I want them to do. Keep that same kind of energy. And keep that same kind of energy when you're dealing with all the other corrupted individuals that are in a position of power. Because y'all know who they are. Y'all know who they are. Stop going for the little man down at the bottom of the totem pole. Because that solves nothing. It's just like when we get in... When, I don't even do reports anymore when the, set, when the headline is two high-powered rifles found in so-and-so Montego Bay. Two high-powered rifle and a handgun found in Kingston, something, Yasso, or that so on. I don't even do reports on those anymore. And the reason why is because they're always going to have stories about guns being found until we deal with the issue of guns coming in and how they're making their way in. Those guns aren't strapped. And you, see, you ever see somebody big long gun them? These guns aren't strapped to anybody's back and them just walk through custom, step off an uh, American airline and just walk through with them big gun. They're not legally declared entry into the country and they seem to be in Jamaica in abundance. And we don't have no gun factory. So, how? And until we deal with that and be honest with that. Now, I've heard, I've heard and I've seen where they're rallying around this whole, uh, now we're going to have an airplane or planes. As far as I know, it was one plane that will govern the waters, the waterway. And I've been saying for the longest that they need to lock off the waterway and they need to govern it by air. That way they can see miles out what's going on, who's coming back and forth, especially with the whole talk of police officers actually confirming that yes, the whole trade between Haiti, Jamaica, and other Caribbean islands, guns for drugs, guns for meat, and all this other stuff, is actually a real issue. Right? But if we're going to complain about it, and if we're going to arrest people, and if we're going to do a good job to make sure it never happens again, or that it stops happening, no matter how many people you arrest in Jamaica with guns, it's not going to heal the problem. It's not going to solve the problem. It's not even going to put a little dent in the issue. Because the real issue is the amount of guns coming in. Where are they coming from and how are they able to make their way into the country? Yes, people say, so Flo, America, you live in a month, so talk about it. The gun they made up there. Um, in all honesty, guns are made in many other places except for the U.S. China make gun too. And them China businessmen there, they seem to have all impunity when it comes to 
shipping in these large containers with all kinds of stuff in them, how you think all them millions and billions of dollars worth of counterfeit um, products make it its way into Jamaica? The Chinese K that some of the singer them sing about. Eh? These kind of things come in through these people as well. So don't just look to the U.S. alone. Enough of them gun there come from other places, from other people. And if the gun them made in the U.S., and, and I'm not defending the U.S., I'm just saying, if the, we have to look at the problem as a whole. So until we are able to address that, stop how they're coming in, then we can start to boast about how many we're cleaning up on the inside. Right? Well, I'm going to leave this one right here. Good luck to him on his sentencing, and we will see where this goes from here on out. Leave your comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this whole video and everything that was said in it. To include the, the superintendent collapsing, uh, Jamaica's justice system seem to be doing its work whenever it's convenient and these kind of things. I'm out. Peace.